welcome to Relate Church at Home. My name is Nicklin and I'm part of the Dream Team here at Relate. We are glad you joined us today. Kids, we have Church at Home just for you over at RelateKids.ca. Head on over for some fun with worship, an amazing story, and an activity sheet. Calling all high school grads, we are excited to announce our first ever drive through graduation happening on Saturday, June 27th from 2 to 4 p.m. at our Surrey location. We are turning our parking lot into a socially distanced drive through party. Get dressed to impress in your grad outfits, decorate your car with balloons and signs, and load it up with your family and friends. We have tons of fun moments planned and we cannot wait to cheer you on as you head into all that lies ahead. We ask you register ahead of time so that we can best prepare for this moment. To RSVP, head to relatechurch.ca slash grad. Fast Track is a simple three-step class that serves as an introduction to who we are and will help you grow in your relationship with God. If you are new to Relate or looking to get involved, join us for step three today at 10.30 a.m. Miss step one or two? Don't worry, you can jump in at any time. The Zoom link will be posted on the live chat at the end of service. Or you can sign up to receive the link via email at relatechurch.ca. Each week, Pastor John teaches a pastor's Bible study online, and he's just begun a deep dive into the gifts of the Spirit. Sign up for a weekly link to the class, study notes, and homework. There's never been a better time to learn about and develop your gifts. We're offering an online edition of Authentic Living, an eight-week program that equips you with practical tools to continue in your journey of wholeness. This next step is for those who have already completed the Freedom Sessions course and serves as both a refresher and a continuation of the healing process that was started in Freedom Sessions 1 and 2. We will be running the program from July 2nd to August 20th via Zoom with a registration costs of $45. Register at relatechurch.ca or through the link in the description box below. Every Sunday, we place every link we mention, as well as our service details, into the description box. The description box is right below this video on your screen. If you're on a laptop, just scroll down and click Show More. If you're on your phone, click the arrow to the right of the title of this video, and the description box will reveal itself. While you're at it, make sure to like and subscribe to our channel so you never miss a video. Church at Home is about to start. Grab your notebook and your Bible, share the link online, and let's get ready for God to move. Hey church, we're so excited to worship with you this morning. In today's set, we have a brand new song. It's called Lord Send Revival. And what a time to be singing these words. So as we collectively gather and worship this morning, let's pray for a fresh outpouring of God's spirit in our land and each of our hearts. So Father, we come before you this morning. We pray that you would just have your way in each of us. We pray for a fresh outpouring of your spirit that you would bring revival to this land and to this world. We worship you, God. Amen. I won't forget the wonder of how you brought deliverance, the exodus in my heart. You found me, you freed me, held back the waters from my release. Oh, yeah, it's your the God who fights for me. Guiding lights 
of your spirit, heaven break out. Come now in power, cover this land like you've done it before. Would you do it again? That is our prayer. Lord, send revival and let it start with us. It makes me think of Ephesians 3, which is my prayer for you, church family. It says that I pray from God's glorious, unlimited resources, he would empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep God's love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Our prayer is for revival. It speaks of God's awakening, God's refreshing, which only comes by his spirit and his spirit is within us. And I pray that you would experience the fullness of God in your life. Happy Father's Day. Today is a significant day. And so as we're worshiping together, we are aware that today is a day of celebration. It is an honor to be able to um, celebrate the men in our world, those who have fathered us. I'm so grateful for my father and grandfathers, for the father of my children, and to all of you dads who are showing up and doing the work of raising the next generation, to all of you who are mentoring and filling that role of a, a male voice of wisdom and strength, thank you, we honor you. We have a conversation today in just a few moments that is rich with wisdom and that's going to be powerful for all of us. We're also aware that for many of you, today is a difficult day that you may be missing your dad, perhaps your relationship with him is broken or distant. Um, it's complicated often for many different people. And again, we're so grateful that as the church family, we are called a family, that we can come together and we, we go together. And so our hearts are with you. Greater than that, God the Father, is with you and his heart towards you is tender it is it is for you he is a good dad he is our example of what it means to father and we are looking to to god ultimately today and we're just praying that by his spirit again that you would know him and that there would be peace and and healing in that for you today we are going to take an opportunity right here before we go into the message to thank you for your generosity, to encourage you maybe to partner with what God is doing in and through Relate Church. You can give by looking at the options that are on your screen or in the drop down menu. And I just wanna thank you for your committed generosity. I wanna remind you that the church is alive and active and meeting needs, both in spreading the gospel and the message of hope that we feel called to spread, and also in bringing the real practical life and sustenance and, and help to our community that's really important in this season more than ever. We get to do that together to be both a lighthouse and a, a hospital, if you will, and a storehouse 
that out of the church we're able to resource the community that God has called us to. And we don't do that, just a few of us, but we do it together. That's what we get to be part of. When I think about the Bible and the example that God gives us, I know that my dad often quotes, and actually I believe you'll hear him today on the panel talking about how our, our desire is to leave an inheritance to our children's children, that a good man leaves something for the generations to come. And that isn't just leaving financial resource, it's, it's leaving a legacy, an example of what it is to put your trust in God and to allow the blessing that He pours into our life to be distributed. That is more than anything else what I've learned from my own dad and those that I, that I look to. And when we look to Jesus' words, he said in Luke 11 that if we as a flawed, um, he said in most translations, it says that if you being evil know how to give a good gift to your children, how much more does our Father in heaven give good things to us, good gifts to us? And when we look at the example of who God is, how he is open-handed, he is generous, he, he gives to us. Though we haven't earned it, he's generous with us. We look at that and we're thankful for the blessings we have, but even greater we learn from who God is, just his very nature, that that's what we're to imitate. And so the church is open-handed. We are looking for opportunities to be a blessing. Church, we're not defensive, we're not stockpiling, we're not holding on to what we have, but our desire is to continue to release it because the world that we've been called to uh, will know us by our love. Love gives. The heart of a good father is to give. The heart of a Christ follower is to give. And so I just want to remind you that you cannot outgive God, that as you let go of what he's given you, that he then has something to work with. It's a, it's a heart thing. And my prayer for you is that you would experience that abundance, that, that flow in your life. We love you and we're so glad that we get to do this together. So as we're celebrating a special day, Father's Day today, we're going to go to the table and have a conversation about what it looks like to pass something on to the next generation. I wanna encourage you to, to pay attention, to take some notes if you need to, maybe take a moment right here and share this, put it on your Facebook or Instagram or whatever, invite people to come along as we talk about what it looks like to be generous in all the ways. I love you. Enjoy this. Well, it's Father's Day, and I am excited that I get to be part of leading a conversation with some of the best men I know, amongst many great men that I know. And we have some of our pastoral, our pastoral boys at the table with me, so I invited them here so we can have a conversation around fatherhood, this amazing, amazing word, this amazing subject that I personally love because I was raised by the greatest father. My amazing father is in heaven today, but I feel one of the greatest blessings God ever gave me was Peter Balzer for my father. But let me introduce you to the great guys that are here with us. This is Brandon Donnery. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure, yeah. I am the, uh, the Youth and Young Adults Director here at Relate Church. And, You've uh, been coming since you were a teenager. Yeah. Well, yeah, like committed since I was 16, but been coming on and off since I was about 12. Wow. Yeah. Great. We love you, Brandon. Mm -hmm. Brandon's the only one who hasn't yet had, he's married, but he's not a father in the sense of giving, well, he's never going to give birth, but he no. has not birthed a <laughs> child, nor has his wife. However, you are truly a father in this house yeah. at Relate. And here we have Dan Comrie. Tell us a little about you. You're a father of the cutest littlies. They are the cutest. Um, <laughs> I'm Dan, my wife Cassandra and I pastor our Valley Campus out in Abbotsford. We've been at Relate for about nine years now. Um, and yeah, I've got a three-year-old girl named Reagan and a nine-month-old boy named Harrison. And 
They're lots of fun. They are regulars on Zoom these days. <laughs> <laughs> you know how much work now, don't you? I never quite knew until I had them. Yeah, and it gets busier. It doesn't get less, just so you know. I'm excited. And there is Rod Dole, amazing Rod Dole. Tell us a little bit more about you. He's my son-in-law. That makes him pretty special to me. Um, yeah, I'm Rod, and I'm married to the boss. And uh, I've been hanging around here since 1992, and I don't think uh, you're going to be able to get rid of me. And, and I have two amazing kids, yeah. uh, Madison, my daughter, or Maddie. She's 24. And she's pretty incredible, and she hangs out at the Valley Campus and loves it out there. We love her. And uh, and my son, Miller, is 21, just turned 21, and uh, it's crazy how fast it goes. And But he's plugged in here around church and mm -hmm. and uh, just loves being part of our Surrey campus and, and wherever he can uh, plug into. So pretty amazing. He has loved church since he was able to walk. He would... He's, he always wanted to come when you came early to set up, and nothing's really changed. And there's Marvin, our amazing, marvelous Marvin. <laughs> Marvin McGee, that is. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, um, hanging out here for a little over 30 years. Um, married to the beautiful Jackie yeah. for 38 years we just celebrated. Uh, three boys, grown men, and seven grandchildren. So that's kind of, that's me. They're pretty great. And who are you? Who are you down there, handsome? <laughs> I'm the guy you married 46 years ago. Yes. <laughs> and we have three daughters and eight grandchildren. Yeah. And uh, I think the best thing in life is a privilege we get to be dads. Yeah. You said it's your favorite title, dad. Okay, yeah. I got a few really fast questions. We'll start with Brandon. We'll go right through. What is your favorite go-to snack? If it's midnight, it's late, what are you eating? Yeah, I'm gonna have to go for a sweet chili heat Doritos. I think I'd wanna go for ice cream, but if it's a late night snack, the dairy. It's not at a good midnight, idea. Probably not a good, good idea. Good to know that. Yes. Good to know. Yes. All right, Dan. Everyone already knows this about me Lay's salt and vinegar. There's no chip like it. Oh, come on. <laughs> Old Dutch. Okay, all white, right, whatever. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna skip the chips and go straight to the ice cream. There we go. Uh, I think a Magnum bar. Oh, I was introduced yeah. in 2006 to the Magnum bar down in New Zealand. I was, so was I with you then? I feel like we've been together. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually kind of fun to watch you eat one because you relish the moment. You're like, everything's very methodical and purposeful and enjoyable. You enjoy your food. I love watching you. And Marvin. Yeah, I've never outgrown milk and cookies. Come on. Wow. <laughs> and you got to dunk them. And what kind of cookies? Oh, I'll take anything. anything. Anything? Like dad's? Chocolate chip is classic, but uh, anything. All right. Oreos. Dad, dad's oatmeal. <laughs> you, John Burns? But it would be ice cream. Totally. But I, I can make my own ice cream sugar-free. So I don't yeah, mind well, how much fat it has in it. I just don't want any sugar. No carbs. Question, though, is it good without sugar? Yes. Yeah. Except for it comes out like a brick of ice. Something he's doing isn't working. It's actually quite entertaining. You've got to figure out how when you freeze it, it doesn't get too He's hard. become very chef -y anybody, in COVID. Anybody and there it's, have, have an answer for me? Let me know. Yeah, he's, he's very entertaining. Turning. I looked it up online and they said you got to put a little alcohol into it. I don't drink any alcohol. We have none in the house. So... <laughs> Maybe rubbing alcohol. Yeah, I was Maybe. That. Try that. Out. Give it a go. Okay, favorite book or movie? Oh... You know what movie surprised me? It's not my favorite, but I watched Aladdin last year. I'm not like a Disney guy. That's not my style. It's a great, it's a great away. story. Yeah. Yeah. I was, uh, I was dancing. Like Aaliyah the was looking at me. Animated or the no, new, like the like the, the new, new one. one. Okay. I went in because my wife wanted to see it. Can you show us? <laughs> Prince Ali. No, that's that's the first I'll go. <laughs> Dan oh, is me gonna already help. amazing. Um, I grew up um, reading uh, J.R.R. Tolkien. So The Hobbit, The Lord of the Rings. Oh, and yeah. then it was like in the prime of my, my youth when all the movies came out. So, oh man, I must have read those about 12 times each. Awesome. Not ashamed at all. They're pretty great. They yeah, are. I couldn't get through the book, so I'm glad the movies came out for me. So <laughs> I'm, I'm a, a fan of Star Wars and Pink Panther. And, and, uh, but I think what my favorite is a movie called Gumball Rally, and it's about cars racing from New York to L.A. 
And uh, it's for me, I'm a car guy. I love cars. So watching that movie and uh, the trip we just had to New York, well, about a year and a half ago, um, I on the Sunday morning, I got up early because that's when the cars leave. And I had to go out. Nobody was on the roads. There was no cars anywhere, no people. And I was standing in the middle of the street in New York City, the big uh, towers, thinking of that movie. And it was just pretty epic to me. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> uh, my my, uh, my ch- choice is nostalgic. Uh, from the first book that really grabbed me uh, was The Outsiders by Essie Hinton. And read that back in school and just loved that story and, and even the, the sequel that she wrote to it. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's probably my go-to. Yeah. Deep well, Marvin. Yeah. <laughs> so how about the Bible? Yeah. Called it. Well, that's a of given. Course. That's good. I'm glad you brought Cheater. one. Yeah. <laughs> Cheater. I, I could say lots of books. But one of the books that really, um, you know, surprisingly affected me was Heavens in the House. I know. By Bobby Houston. It's a great book. It's very. What's she? Can she I say writes feminine? like poetry. Yeah. I don't think it's feminine. It's just poetic in, in its expression. But it's yeah. a, it's a great book. I, yeah. It it helps you fall in love with church. Yeah. Again. She mm-hmm. gives such a. She's working on. We're getting get a new release on that. I'm going to share a scripture and then I want to bring this. Um, and speak about God is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God always has been, is right here in, the, in our, this moment with us and is, will be with us in the future. And I want to share this out um, from the whole thought of what, is, what has God done, what is God doing, and what do you think is coming, and what will God do? And here in Psalm 78, I'm so passionate about generations. I can can read this, and I'll have to fight tears. I do that often, because I so believe in the generations and in legacy, and I'm so grateful for those that have gone before me. I am not here on my own, and none of us are. We are a, a product of people who have carried something for us so that we could be here today and carry that into the future. And I feel the weight of it but the joy of it as well. And in Psalm uh, 78, it says, open your ears to what I am saying, for I will speak to you in a parable. I will teach you hidden lessons from our past stories, which we have heard and known, stories our ancestors handed down to us. We will not hide these truths from our children. We will tell the next generation about the glorious deeds of the Lord, about his power and his mighty wonders. For he issued his laws to Jacob. He gave his instructions to Israel. He commanded our ancestors to teach them to their children so that the next generation might know them, even the children not yet born, and they in turn will teach their own children So each generation should set its hope anew on God, not forgetting his glorious miracles and obeying his commands. I love this scripture because it speaks about the past, the present, and the future. Speaks about the faithfulness of God and, and how he is with us and will take us into the future. I believe God is a generational builder and I believe we're sitting in this moment and what a moment it is. A moment that is extraordinary that history books will write about a story where this world has been invaded by a disease or, or a um, COVID-19 that has, has, I mean, we can't even put language around what it has done. It's a global pandemic. And then also this, this uprising of what happened after the death of, of George Floyd and this, this uprising and anger and disappointment and sadness and awareness of, of, how wrong and unjust some things are in this world. And I think yet we sit here. I mean, I think about the Me Too movement and and how women rose up and talked about so many things that have been so wrong, injustices, and yet here we are representing this moment and praying that we would represent this moment well. And I, for one, believe in men. And I believe the world is filled with good men. And I believe that though there's a lot wrong with the world, we have the privilege of carrying the love and the light of Jesus um, in our lives and in our stories and bringing it into the future. And so the past is important. It's understanding. It's not ever just being dismissive of it, but learning from it. And so I want to just open this conversation and whoever wants to can start, I hope that you speak into it. So how has your past shaped you when it comes to fatherhood? What is your story? And has there been a person that truly has set you up for a win in life so that you can carry that blessing, that generational 
and that, leg, that generational legacy into the future. So anybody, feel free to start. It's a big old question. Actually, I'll start. Um, I think it all began with me, and I think the, the, the biggest thing to set me up was um, my grandparents uh, on my dad's side. They actually had a tragedy in their life and lost their, their oldest daughter, their only child at the time. And it was a church that actually reached out to them. They were not born again at the, at the time, but the church reached out, out to them in their community, and they got born again as a result of that. And so that was passed down to my parents and then passed down to me. And I think that that was probably one of the most significant things that's been passed on uh, and a legacy that still continues uh, with uh, our children and grandchildren. And then I think one of the other great things as well, and kind of even uh, reflecting on it during this time, um, uh, as you guys know, my, my wife is a person of color, but I, I'm looking back, I realized how loving and accepting my parents actually were and how open they were and how that actually translated into my life and never even thought twice about, about uh, marrying her, and they never even thought twice about embracing her. And so Beautiful. I'm really grateful for that. I'm glad that, you know, uh, from someone from my generation actually experienced that, that openness and that, that love and acceptance. And uh, I really believe that it was as a result of them providing that for me. They've been married for like 60, 64 years, I think they're coming up to. Wow. Incredible, amazing. I think for me, I'm, I'm just so grateful and thankful for uh, the heritage in my life from my grandparents, great-grandparents, and, and doing a little bit of studying into, into the family and, and where they came from and what they went through. And, and even for me, um, being a little bit more personal, like my dad lost his mom at a very young age. And my mom lost both of her parents um, when she was in her 20s and, and one a little bit earlier. And just seeing how, you know, that, that's, that's crucial in life mm -hmm. um, when you lose a parent. That's so marking. But to see them keep going, keep pushing on, not give up, um, keep fighting, uh, fighting for us, and along with handing on the baton of a relationship with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And I think for me, that's the, one of the most important things in my life is to do that with my kids. Um, just expose them in such an amazing way, thankful for church to Jesus and what mm -hmm. he truly is and what he truly means to, to me and to a, a church family where they can see that and they can be immersed in that. Um, but I think another big part of that is, and I'm probably going to refer to these guys a lot, but is, is um, people like these guys, that they play such a huge part in my kids' lives. Um, so, yeah, if I can re recommend anything, you know, get plugged into church, get your kids around solid, incredible people mm -hmm. um, that you know, or sewing into them. And, and I just think that's probably the most amazing thing that yeah. you can do. And I'm thankful that I had that opportunity seeing that pass down from generation to generation. So, and I didn't want to be the guy to drop the ball. There's no way I was going to drop that baton. There was a time in my life, got a little rocky. I, I got a little lost, but I'm so thankful for um, church family just being so welcoming. I think one of the things that you did, Rod, that I'd just like you to take a <clears throat> moment and enlarge on it is for when Miller turned 16, his birthday, what, what did you do? Well, as a family, we had a bunch of people over um, that have, had been speaking into his life and sewing into his life. We, we, um, we spent uh, some time just, and we had everybody just just say something and just sow into him and speak life into him. And I think that's so, it, that's so um, important, um, you know, if, if not on a daily basis, on a weekly basis or, or whenever possible, is that, that his peers are speaking life into him or, or your kids. Yeah. So right. that's they what were we all leaders in the church that he kind of looked up to. Yeah, leaders, I mean, bandmates. It was, and, it was and, powerful. Uh, yeah, I think that was one of those days we just sat back and were in awe of the beautiful family of God. And we know 
church isn't perfect and because people aren't perfect, but we serve this perfect God and together the community is pretty beautiful. Yeah. I love the idea. Uh, both of you already touched on it. Um, like I was raised in a, in a Christian home. I'm so thankful for my parents. They, they do church with us. They're some of our, our key leaders. They're the best. Oh, I love them. <laughs> um, but I was raised in a home where I accepted Jesus, I think at three, right? Attended church my whole life never really had the like strayed so far off the path. My faith had to become my own at some point, of course. Um, but I, for, for a season there, I remember feeling like, I don't have a cool testimony. Like this, this sucks. I want a better testimony, right? Um, I would hear about like radical conversion stories and think, oh, like my story would be so much better. But I had the revelation one day. It was during a men's conference here, actually, um, that, that my testimony um, is one of God's faithfulness. It's one of generational faithfulness yeah. through the years because it wasn't the story for, for my grandparents on, on my dad's side. First generation believers, both of them came together. They've been doing missions work for the last 60 years, right? And um, I'm, I'm excited by the idea that for all of us, we have the opportunity to build legacy for the future by making the same decision they did so like i was born into it but not everybody was no so like as we as we minister and as we we lead in church i love the idea of of reminding young men and young women that like hey my grandparents made a decision and look at the legacy that's followed through from that my parents believe their children believe grandchildren great grandchildren yeah. in church mm -hmm. loving jesus yeah. serving and, and and think about the difference that each of us can make in our own lives by like doing what you said. I'm not yeah. going to, I'm not going to drop the baton. No, I'm going to, I'm going to lead well. I'm going to carry forward. I'm going to follow Jesus. Um, that like, that's what I get so excited about in church. We've got a pretty young group out in the Valley and I just, I'm excited about seeing families grow and children grow up in church and just think about, we only see such a, a, a short amount of time, right? Mm -hmm. We're like dust. Yep. But think about the generations yeah. on the yeah. other side of decisions we make yeah. in the here and now that, that leaves such a, a legacy. I think of Brandon when I think of that. Like, I do too. Come on. What's your story, Brandon? Yeah, uh, so encouraging to hear. You know, I love what you said there. I, I think that there's, if you actually think about it, there is that moment where trajectories just change. And it's not just for your life, but it, it ripples. Uh, actually, I was uh, reading on this that when fathers come to church, the rate of children coming to church uh, goes up from two out of 50 to uh, two thirds to three quarters. So when a mother is the primary figure, wow, okay, it's, uh, it's 4% to two thirds to three quarters. So that's a pretty substantial difference in a father coming. Uh, for me, I, I grew up in a little bit of a different circumstance. I grew up with a single mom who did an amazing job she, she is amazing. She is a rock star. And she, honestly, I, I say this a lot. I, I don't have a lot of those visible day-to-day uh, -day issues that come without a father because my mom did such a good job. Can I, because you never had a father. Your father no. was never for yeah, one never day in, in your picture. life. Yeah. And, and I had, a, and I had a, a good network of extended family. Yeah. Uh, so my, my, uh, my grandpa, my granddad was, was quite prevalent in my life when I was young. Uh, but I didn't have a direct father figure in my life. And, you know, what I saw in that, and it's, it's kind of counterintuitive because I know that it's definitely God, it's God's vision to have strong fathers. And yet there is also uh, an, uh, an opportunity in that or a moment where you see God's faithfulness in those seasons where, where you're in desperate need. So I saw God's faithfulness in my mom's life. Mm -hmm. And I remember she would articulate God's faithfulness and I wouldn't fully understand it. In fact, I don't think I even necessarily believed it until I came to faith at 16 years old. And it was like all those pieces clicked into place. But I also think about how in that way, because of that void, God became a father. Yeah. You know, you, you, when we were introducing ourselves, we introduce ourselves kind of by what we do, but primarily by who we are. Mm -hmm. And that's for, for these guys here, that's a father, that's a husband. And I think about God, how does God describe himself? Well, when Jesus described God, he, his, his main means was as a father. Mm -hmm. And we see that God is a father to those. He's a father to all, but in that particular moment, I saw God's faithfulness in that way. So it's beautiful. Yeah, there's something cool in that. So shout out to all of you single moms out there raising men and women, but raising them up. And I think often 
there is concern. And we've been asked this so many times over the years, haven't we, John? Here I am, a single mom, and I'm raising sons. How do I do this? But I think you're a beautiful story of someone who was raised by a beautiful mom that didn't just think that without a father in their life that, that these kids were messed up forever. Yeah. I think it's a great story. And thank you for what you do and how you serve the generations here. I just love how you lead and have been so faithful mm -hmm. in doing that. So the past is a bridge into the future. And so this present moment we are here now and we have an opportunity. John likes to say the most important moment of your life is? This one. This one. Why is this so important? We're sitting in a moment right now and I'd love to just in the, um, talk for a moment about what this moment feels like and looks like and then um, what we're dreaming of for the future. Well, I think um, Angela, Pastor Angela, our daughter, um, she did a great job a couple of weeks ago talking about the Kairos moment. Yeah. And it's, it's a moment that can, it's, it's pregnant with eternity. And I think just recognizing the power of a moment, God can change eternity in a moment and God can put eternity into a moment. Yeah. And we just have to take every moment and we have to recognize the potential of it. And we're in the middle of this crazy. We've never, ever seen anything like this in the world before. And we, as dads, have an amazing opportunity. I think um, you've all heard the, the, um, the John Maxwellism, uh, leadership is influence. Mm -hmm. And fatherhood is influence. It's not so much about biology as it is about influence and about being able to change lives and change generations. And this moment that we have right now, instead of, of being, being very me conscious, we're learning and almost, um, you know, all of the things going on is causing us to be others conscious. That's good, John. And yeah. I think that is the, that's the heart of fatherhood. I love 1 John chapter 2, where, where John says, I write to you young children, I write to you young men, I write to you fathers. And then he, then he repeats himself. And over the years, that's, that's always you know, challenged me. And this is what God said to me. Um, children are all about what they get. Young men are all about what they can do. Fathers are all about who they can empower. And we have the opportunity to step up and make a difference in this world. And so, yeah, I think the, the moment that we're in right now is like never before. My favorite scripture is Proverbs 13, 22. It says that a good man leaves, leaves an inheritance to his children's children. That's, that's talking about generations. And to be good can't really be seen in, the, in this moment as much as it'll be seen how this moment affects yeah. generations. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my, my grandfather, and his last name was Miller, which is um, Rod's son, first name Miller. And, and it, I think part of it is just because he was absolute hero in my life. He, he influenced my life uh, maybe more so than most if not more than any. Um, and it was simply because uh, he, he used to, he, he just believed in me. I was the bad boy. I'm the second oldest of 11. Did you say was? All my siblings was? could, what? You <laughs> was, you, I was the bad boy? <laughs> well, I was worse <laughs> than I am. Just being <laughs> a cheeky if wife. If my siblings are watching this, they could all agree. My mom used to testify and said that he's, he was worse than the other 10 put together. Yeah. Um, but, <laughs> One person always believed in me, and that was my granddad. And we were raised, you know, Catholic. So um, he used to say to me, even though everybody else said I was a, I was a mess up, screw up, whatever, he'd say, Johnny, you're going to grow up. You're going to be a priest one day. And he, he didn't realize it, but Revelation 1-6, I am a priest. <laughs> we, we are priests called to make a difference in this world. And anyway, he, he made a difference in my life. You know, it really is that, that influence and that having that person that believes in you that gives that voice that people can hear. Because I know for in my own life uh, with my kids, you know, it starts out with small children. It's a dictatorship. You tell them everything. You, but eventually that changes. And in that transition, you, you, you want to have grace, but you all, 
for the purpose of having a voice. And so I, I'm glad that, that even now our sons, even though they're grown, I still have a voice in their lives yeah. and there's still influence uh, in their lives. And, and uh, I think that is so key, you know, whether, whether it's a voice of a parent or whether it's a voice of the, the friends and the relationships around them, it's so key in influencing, moving that person forward to where they, God has purposed them to be. Mm -hmm. I think it's so interesting that it's not just, yeah, it's not just the biological relationships that, that take effect there. And sometimes um, it's not even people who are necessarily in your life for a long period of time, but like there's a spiritual um, like mantle of fatherhood that I think gets placed upon us. Sometimes I think about when I first showed up here to Relate Church, I didn't know you guys at all, but you've acted as spiritual fathers in my lives. I think about someone like... Um, Chris Doucette, Chris and Brandy Lee small group was the first one I went to. And, and you know what, that is, those are shoulders that I've stood on as we've moved forward in, in mm -hmm. life as a church. I think about as we planted the new campus, um, there's people there, Cam, Cam Broad, you're watching this right now, Cam, I know you are, but I haven't known him for more than a couple of years now. And yet he was building a legacy long before he met me that was able to actually sustain mm -hmm. that next generation. PJ, I've heard you say that our ceiling should be their floor. Mm -hmm. There's something beautiful in that, right? I'm building for the yeah. next. I love it when a man becomes a father. His shoulders grow two feet. <laughs> it's called responsibility. Um, I think, Brandon, you already got it. Go get it. there, Brandon. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> um, and then, PJ, there was one more thing you said there. Um, you were talking about children, young men, and fathers. And I think that's something I'm learning even in this season is the difference between a young man is concerned with what he can do and a father is concerned with what, who he can empower. And sometimes the work of raising kids, like we're in the thick of yeah. it right now, it doesn't feel like um, productive work. I don't see the immediate payoff the same way I could when I take on like a project in the house. And sometimes my proclivity is towards like, what can I do that'll show immediate, like you did this, well done. And, and I'm learning and realizing that the most productive work I can do is the long, slow, yeah. dark work sometimes. Yeah. It's in the shadows of just, I'm gonna spend time, I'm gonna sow into your life because, because my life isn't about me anymore, right? Mm -hmm. It's about them. It's about empowering them to be all that God has created them to be. And they need me to be a present father for that to happen. Beautiful. Just being accessible, I think, is one of the most powerful things that you can do, being present in the moment, like you said. And I don't, I don't with, my, with my grandfather on my, on my dad's side, such an amazing guy. And uh, I don't remember any epic moment with him. And, you know, he didn't say I was going to be a priest or anything, that kind of stuff. But I remember he was always there just to be accessible. And in that, I saw, um, I, I got to see into his life and, and how he worshipped when he, when he was in church and how he was with other people. So I think just being accessible um, in those moments so people can see you, people can see into your life and how you live it. You guys are amazing. Time runs so fast and I feel like we could talk forever because every one of you have this wealth of wisdom and knowledge on the inside of you. But I'm gonna throw this last question then I'm gonna get John to pray because every one of you shared your beautiful hearts. But I wonder about the future. Here you are, you're leading lots of young men and women in what you do here with ministry at Relate Church. But also, I know you have a dream of fatherhood one day. I'm assuming that, yes. but I know that to be true. But um, what is your dream for the future? Sitting in this moment as you look forward, mm. what do you see? Well, I'm super hopeful. Beautiful. I think that's just one place to start. I see in this upcoming generation, um, which I guess I'm not that much farther ahead of, but uh, I see a desire for authenticity. I see that there's this desire to maybe take down some of the, um, the walls that we built or the, the performance that we, we tend to put on and people just crave authenticity. They're right. searching for something. I think about YouTube and how YouTube is now the number one profession of young people that they, they want to aspire to be, become YouTubers. And that's the platform of unprofessional, authentic um, communication. Uh, I think of the, the desire for justice. I, yeah. I see that in the next generation. And, I, and while 
all those things aren't necessarily, I think they're, they're fragments of truth in all of those things. I think the beauty and the challenge for this next generation and for us as leaders is how do we then take those desires and point them to Jesus in that? Beautiful. So how do we, how do we show what authenticity looks like? You guys have been talking so much about intergenerational relation, uh, relationships. And actually, uh, Barna just put out a book called Faith for Exiles. David Kinnaman wrote it. And he talks about one of the, the five key factors to determining students who will become resilient disciples is that they have a deep network of intergenerational relationships. So I see that being a movement for the future. And I think of COVID and I think how COVID has actually created an opportunity to pull back the veil, so to speak, and actually yeah. to build relationships, um, to connect beyond what we can do, but more as to who we are. Um, I see uh, connecting God's heart of justice with the desire for justice and actually pointing people to the fulfillment. We were just talking before this, how Jesus's heart is always that of redemption. Yeah. And I see that. So I'm actually really hopeful um, about what God is gonna do in this next season. I think that COVID is providing a way and a space for young people to encounter God in, in a real authentic, powerful way that um, he's gonna take all those areas, all those desires that are already in their heart and configure them and point them back to him. Wow, that's like a sila. Pause and think of this. That's beautiful. It is very hopeful. Yeah. I'm hopeful too for such a time as this. God's doing something great. And I love that we get to be a part of what he's doing. You know, the power of choice today matters. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19, which I think about so often. It, it says that, I, that this day I call heaven and earth as witnesses against you that I have set before you life and death. Blessing and curses, now choose life. He gives us the answer to this multiple question so that you and your children can live. So God has faith in the future. We have faith in the future. And so John, why don't you just close? I want you to share the story. I want to, um, just a quick invitation of just a Father's Day that forever changed your life and, and maybe just invite others to, do something like what you did, and can then you pray for us? The opportunity to change the world. It is now, right now. And Father's Day is a great opportunity day. Um, I've often said, if you, if you want to change the world, this is how you do it. Grab a moment and pour your heart into it. Grab an opportunity. It happens all around us all the time. We miss most of them but right now, don't miss this, yeah. and pour your heart into it. That, that means do something that is maybe not easy, but important. Maybe say the things that you've never said that need to be said. That's, it's that simple. So I tell the story about um, one Father's Day that absolutely changed my life and our family, and that was, uh, I think, about 15, 16 years ago now. It was on Father's Day, and I was driving between this campus and another campus we had, and I picked up my phone, and I called my dad, and, and he answered, and I said, hey, Dad, happy Father's Day, and, and uh, you know, that's what you're supposed to do. So he was answering just like, you're doing what you're supposed to do. Nothing's different. Yeah, oh, thanks, John. Yeah, yeah. And he was ready to hang up, and I said to him, Dad, um, what? Don't hang up. Why? Because I want to say something. What? <laughs> I get choked up every time I talk about this. Um, I just want to say that I'm, I'm glad you're my dad. I love you. We don't ever say that. that. Just those words we didn't ever say. And there was silence on the other end of the phone. And then this crackling voice. I'm glad you're mine too. I love you too. Click. And that night we had our family the Burns family, his, my siblings and, and their kids and everybody. Um, we met at my brother's house to celebrate Father's Day. And I walked into the crowd because there's, it's a crowd. There's, um, I think at that time there was about 85 or 90 of us. And um, my dad seen me and walked straight across the room, put his arms around me and, and gave me a kiss. Kind of weird. <laughs> um, but and he said to me, have I ever told you how proud of you I am? And no, I'd never heard that before. But I was literally dying to hear that. And that, that was a moment I'll never forget. And then he, he said, look, look at me. He said, I, I want you to know that I love you. Don't you ever forget it. Ugh. 
That was a day, a moment that changed eternity. From that day on, my dad never left my presence without saying, I'm proud of you or I love you. But not just me, all my, all my siblings. It, it, it was a marked day. And I believe there's opportunity for every one of us. And there may be some of you watching that, you know, you, you may never talk that language. Well, it's, you, you can change. About time. You could pick up the phone. You could do something. This, this change the moment Kairos opportunity is right in front of us right now. So I'd love to pray with you. And if you've never opened your heart to Jesus, that's the beginning. You say, well, I wasn't raised that way. I wasn't raised that, you know, in many different things, but you can make a change. And as we've talked about already, it's not just for you then. It goes on that ripple effect for generations. And all you need to do is open your heart. Open your heart to Jesus. God so loved you that he sent his son, Jesus. Jesus came. He walked on this earth 2,000 years ago. He died on a cross. Three days later, he rose from the dead. He's alive right now. And he's wherever you are. He's here. He's there. And when you open your heart, he said, I'll come in and I'll make my home in your heart. When, when he makes his home in your heart, your home. It simply takes an invitation from you. So I'd love to lead you in a simple prayer. If you've never opened your heart to Jesus, I encourage you and invite you to pray along. Just say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. Thank you for loving me. I believe you're the Son of God. You died on a cross to pay for my sins. You rose again and you're alive forevermore. Come into my heart and be my Lord. Teach me how to make a difference in my life and in my world. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, I want to thank all of you for being with me today and amazing, amazing men. We value each one of your voices in your lives so much. And so happy Father's Day to all the amazing men out there. Whether you are a father or not, we celebrate you. And uh, why don't you pick up the phone and call somebody that you just want to say, I love. may not be a father, but it may be a great mentor, a leader in your life that you can take an opportunity to say thank you. We love you. Have a great week. Thank you, Pastor Helen and team, for that powerful conversation. We miss gathering with you in person, but we are so grateful for the opportunity to connect online. It doesn't stop here, because there are ample opportunities to gather each week. We've compiled a list of all our gatherings, and the link is in the description box below. Click the drop-down link and find a gathering that works for you. Make sure to follow us on social media, tag us in your stories of church at home, and share what life looks like for you. Have a great week.